here's the important part. If you realize that your opponent is committing to an option, this is a commitment, okay? Meaning they can't get out of this, they can't cancel this. This is already a commitment. The moment you see her commit to this, that means you can use your drive gauge in order to push them back full screen once they push them back full screen they'll either do one of two things recognize the fact that they don't have any drive gauge which means that they're going to play very passive or they're going to try and spin knuckle in or try to fight you in this box or this range these are the options that you have to consider So on today's video, we got poison on the menu. Let's see what type of things we're dealing with when it comes to Aki. So let's look at this instance here where, you know, you started off really strong. You're going for your options, your typical options. Everything's looking good. Then we see this. Afterwards, we don't really do anything about the situation, despite knowing the fact that number one, he whiffed here. And if you know that your opponent whiffs here, it is at the very least, we should be trying to like crouch jab that because if we get the whole thing, then we get the whole route. Okay, so there's one thing that I want to note in this instance, right? While you're playing neutral and you're playing neutral against Cavi. One thing that you have to keep in mind nearly at all times or nearly every time that you go for your bubble, right? You have to keep in mind the fact that the moment you pop this, there is a possibility that she might just go straight at you. Okay, if she just goes through spin knuckle, it goes around your fireball that's traveling this way, right? In these cases, you want to be very mindful of where you're pressing it. And in the case that you do, be ready to crouch jab. Because if you're not ready to crouch jab in these instances, you're essentially putting yourself in a situation that's unfavorable. So in this situation, right, he went for spin knuckle. And the reason why he went for his spin knuckle here is namely because they were expecting a, a situation where you would throw bubble again. You conditioned them to think that it was coming off of this instance here. Now they were thinking, okay, the next off of the next instance, they might go for something again in neutral because now we're back at full screen. So in these cases, now that we've kind of conditioned their mind to think I am willing to put out a bubble now we're very patient and we wait for opportunities to punish this and then we can get a route off of it each time so if you clicked on this video i'm sure you need some help lord knows i did at some point but here's the thing you want your favorite content creators to come and help you but let's be real they're charging like 60 dollars per hour you don't need that but when i got you I got you good. Over on this channel, I do free coaching sessions on Tuesdays and on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. EST. So what does that look like? I essentially go over your matches. I can give you tools so that you can succeed the next time you open up rank. So once again, join my Discord. Wait till I'm live either on Tuesdays or on Thursdays, 6.30 p.m. EST. Be there or be square. Back to the video. So this situation here is going to be one of the situations that's going to be the hardest for you to deal with, and that is dealing with dive kick. OK, there are going to be situations where you feel as though you should press or you can press um, right back at your opponent, and especially with you using forward heavy punch. It's even more committal of an option. So in these cases, you have to be very mindful of where you're pressing uh, your normals at. In the case that we want to try and stop a dive kick, we can use standing heavy kick as an option, crouching heavy kick as an option, or we can also use our special moves and enter your special move, which is quarter circle forward, uh, heavy chain to uh, circumvent this situation. Okay, so one thing that I want you to note in this sequence is number one, you don't even really need to technically hold all of this pressure right so the moment you get hit here i want you to remind yourself number one they're in burnout what does that mean that means that in the case that they decide to block your uh drive reversal then you still can't technically get punished for it 
right? And in these cases, you want to be very mindful of that so that it opens up more options. Now, mind you, they still can punish you for this if they if your opponent decides to hold up on this instance. If they hold up um, on offense and then you hit drive reversal, you move forward and then you get punished for it. But the thing is, is that now that you know this, uh, you can either be very patient and then up chain them or you can just kind of be chill. But here's the important part. If you realize that your opponent is committing to an option this is a commitment okay meaning they can't get out of this they can't cancel this this is already a commitment the moment you see her commit to this that means you can use your drive gauge in order to push them back full screen once they push them back full screen they'll either do one of two things recognize the fact that they don't have any drive gauge which means that they're going to play very passive or they're going to try and spin knuckle in or try to fight you in this box or this range these are the options that you have to consider so once again if you notice the fact that they are committed to an option like a hooligan a hooligan option then granted they do have hooligan cancelable and in, in the context of how she knocked you down she can't save jump it or at least make herself safe so all you have to do is spend two meter go for bubble chase and then go from there right these are the types of options that you have available to you and it's good to keep in mind so now in this instance right while you went for technically the thing that i would do in this instance um the way you went about it was a little bit eh. so the reason why this is eh is because you didn't get the correct uh, amount of frame data off your frame kill as you can see this frame kill leaves you plus three so in this case that means that you can't use like your stand light kick or any option to punish this because that that specific setup doesn't leave you plus three now i don't know if this was an execution error or whether the setup doesn't work but this is something that you want to keep in mind if you knock your opponent down and then you go for instead of going for this option so instead of this option, we go for an option like this instead. Or we go for an option like this where we get the stun. We put down the we get the stun early. We put down the thing and then we go from there. That's how we're going to make sure that they stay in place. So in this case, instead of going for something like this or going for an overhead setup, that'll leave you only plus three. You can knock them down early, get the setup, knock them down and then hit them hard. Right. That's going to be your better option of the two, as opposed to going for this, because unfortunately the combo was too long. So going for standing heavy kick into this will allow them to recover and DI you back. So waking up with this option, putting out the thing and making them guess off of the situation will actually help you a lot more than what you would think it would. It is unfortunate. I'm not going to lie because you definitely went for the right choice but going for the reset that you are uncertain of whether it'll give you the enough plus frames can be a little bit dicey okay so after this situation here right you hit a successful crouching uh heavy kick into super you got the combo it's beautiful right you hit the magnum opus cool however one thing that you need to keep in mind here is that if your opponent decides to go for level three here or ca in this instance this is a punish now the reason why this is very important is that now that leaves you about here and you've lost about this much drive gauge if not this much drive gauge and now you basically only have give or take about this much to work with left right it puts you in a more dire situation top of which it gives them enough drive gauge to do a drive rush uh low forward drive rush without burning themselves out and you lose about this much drive gauge so you about have about this much left so these are things that you want to consider before throwing out bubble here because the moment that it, you, we get to the end game and your opponent has level three or ca you have to keep in mind the fact that this could be a potential punish you have to keep in mind all of the factors that go into uh at the end game because this end game is what gets neglected a lot when uh, newer masters or 1500s play the game
Now, the last thing I'll say here is that like when you press, you are not pressing with confidence, right? So the reason why I'm saying you're not pressing with confidence is because when you get in these scenarios, right, where like you want to press and you see something that you can punish, you notice the fact that she whiffed throw. We go for the crouch tap for the punish. If you know that you're going to get a punish counter, follow it up with the according button. Okay. You can get a standing medium punch here. You can kill off of this situation, actually. Okay. Just want to point this out once again, really quick. This is another situation where you got the punish here, but we don't follow it up. We just try to throw. If our opponent gets privy to that, they're going to attack, and then we lose the opportunity for the guaranteed damage. Sir, you can get the, the setup for it, but the guaranteed damage is much better to get on a more consistent basis. Okay, so I'm going to preach this up until the cows come home, but a lot of you guys do not have good meter management, right? You got a good hit here, but unfortunately we drive rush. Okay, so let me show you a little bit of a trick that helps with this situation. Okay, when you get knocked down, okay, survey the board. When you have a downtime in neutral, survey the board. While you're getting comboed, survey the board. You should always be spending a little bit of time serving the board. So on this instance here, I'm thinking that, okay, I block this or I try to parry this. And then if I do not have enough drive gauge to drive rush, I am choosing combo routes that do not require me to drive rush unless I am comfortable with the situation at hand. That being if they only have like this much health left, then I'm like, you know what? Let me risk the farm. But outside of that, I don't really want to do that because it's not a good situation to be in. With that being said, just make sure that you're serving surveying all of the resources on the field okay that means health bars that means drive gauges that means super gauges because all of these things are going to matter and it changes how you view the certain situation and how you can circumvent certain situations these are going to make or break the difference between you winning or losing so one thing that I noticed when I'm watching high level Aki, right, is that once they get the poison application, there's going to be a lot of moments where they're going to be fishing for um, a, essentially a situation where you can go into heavy chain or a situation where you can um, get the poison pop up. Right. So in these instances here, while you're playing the neutral, the moment you apply poison like this, you should be skirting the line looking for opportunities to do so. Right. So either a you decide to get really active with like a raw drive rush attempt or you get a little bit more on the passive side where we're searching for anti -airs. However, anti airing in this manner is probably the least purposeful because not only does it leave you higher than your opponent meaning that you can get mashed on, but it also loses poison. You don't get the extension from the poison combo, which will also carry you to the corner. These are all things that you're losing out on by deciding to choose that end here, as opposed to fishing for the hit that you want, because that's the, the poison is the whole, the name of the game with the character, right? So using, taking opportunities to apply poison and then fish for either a like a punish counter into heavy chain or heavy chain anti-air you get one of the highest rewards from getting an anti-air so you have to keep that in mind while you're playing hockey why is it that whenever people are put in situations in which they gotta block it always gets a little bit finicky okay we just we just chose not to block in these instances we have to make sure that we're choosing opportunities to block because as of right now, we are not choosing to block anything. Instead, when we're put in these situations where we're knocked down, we're essentially choosing a bunch of scrambly options, not really choosing solid options. And because of that, we're finding ourselves in situations where once we find once we're in the corner, we just get mauled completely. You didn't use drive reversal a single time. We're not waking up parry. We're not using any of our options to really circumvent the neutral here. So then as a result, we find ourselves just getting absolutely mauled. And that's the thing about playing characters that don't have uh, 
reversal ex reversal options you have to be smart with where you want to use drive reversal if you don't use drive reversal at all you're just finding yourself just completely stuck and especially if you don't decide to block at all yeah cam is gonna roll you pretty easily with that being said thank you so much for watching the video have a good one y'all peace